These will be my notes that I took on chapter two of the 11th edition of How to Think Straight About Psychology by Keith A. Stanovich. Again, these notes are just directly from the book. They're the sections that I thought were the most important, and they are also not a substitute for reading the book. I just think that uh, this could be helpful for people who are reading it. Chapter two, falsifiability, how to foil little green men in the head. And again, I like to read the chapter summary before I go through the notes and then read the summary again after reading the notes. So the chapter two summary, what scientists most often mean by a solvable problem is a testable theory. The definition of a testable theory is a very specific one in science. It means that the theory is potentially falsifiable. If a theory is not falsifiable, then it has no implications for actual events in the natural world and hence is useless. Psychology has been plagued by unfalsifiable theories, and that is one reason why progress in the discipline has been slow. Good theories are those that make specific predictions, and such theories are highly falsifiable. The confirmation of a specific prediction provides more support for the theory from which it was derived than the confirmation of a prediction that was not precise. In short, one implication of the falsifiability criterion is that all confirmations of theories are not equal. Theories that receive confirmation from highly falsifiable, highly specific predictions are to be preferred. Even when predictions are not confirmed, i.e. when they are falsifiable, this falsification is useful to theory development. A falsified prediction indicates that a theory must either be discarded or altered so that it can account for the discrepant data patterns. Thus, it is by theory adjustment caused by falsified predictions that sciences such as psychology get closer to the truth. So the section prior to section 2.1, the way scientists make sure that they are dealing with testable theories is by ensuring that their theories are falsifiable. That is, that they have implications for actual events in the natural world. We will see why what is called the falsifiability criterion is so important in psychology. Section 2.1, theories and the falsifiability criterion. Scientific theories must always be stated in such a way that the predictions derived from them could potentially be shown to be false. Falsifiability criterion definition. The methods of evaluating new evidence relevant to a particular theory must always include the possibility that the data will falsify the theory. Karl Popper is a philosophy of science whose writings are read widely by working scientists. The falsify the falsifiability criterion states that, for a theory to be useful, the predictions drawn from it must be specific. The theory must go out on a limb, so to speak, because in telling us what should happen, the theory must also imply that certain things will not happen. If these latter things do happen, then we have a clear signal that something is wrong with the theory. It may need to be modified, or we may need to look for an entirely new theory. A successful theory is not one that accounts for every possible outcome because such a theory robs itself of any predictive power. We should have confidence in science not because it is always right, but instead because it is possible to prove it wrong. A theory in science is an interrelated set of concepts that is used to explain a body of data and to make predictions about the results of future experiments. Hypotheses are specific predictions that are derived from theories, which are more general and comprehensive. Currently viable theories are those that have had many of their hypotheses confirmed. The theoretical structures of such theories are thus consistent with a large number of observations. However, when the database begins to contradict the hypotheses derived from a theory, scientists begin trying to construct a new theory, or more often simply make adjustments in the previous theory that will provide a better interpretation of the data. Thus, the theories that are under scientific discussion are those that have been verified to some extent and that do not make many predictions that are contradicted by the available data. They are not merely guesses or hunches. Hypotheses are the things that you may have many of that ultimately add up to support a theory. A theory is the way we know something works based on the evidence we've collected, all the hypotheses that have successfully been tested. With a theory, we can make predictions. You do not have a theory about why cats purr. In that case, you would have a hypothesis as to why cats purr. Good theories, then, make predictions that expose themselves to falsification. Bad theories do not put themselves in jeopardy in this way. Freudian theory uses a complicated conceptual structure that explains human behavior after the fact, that is, after it has occurred. 
but does not predict things in advance. In short, Freudian theory can explain everything. However, as Popper argued, it is precisely this property that makes it scientifically useless. It makes no specific predictions. Adherents of psychoanalytic theory spend much time and effort in getting the theory to explain every known human event, from individual quirks of behavior to large-scale social phenomena. But their success in making the theory a rich source of after-the-fact explanation robs it of any scientific utility. Freudian psychoanalytic theory currently plays a much larger role as a spur to the literary imagination than as a theory in contemporary psychology. Its demise within psychology can be traced, in part, to its failure to satisfy the falsifiability criterion. Influenced by psychoanalytic ideas, psychologist Bruno Bettelheim popularized the now discredited notion of, quote, refrigerator mothers as the cause of autism, and thought that the precipitating factor in infantile autism is the parent's wish that this child should not exist. Psychoanalysis caused regression and progress towards understanding and treating Tourette's syndrome in that, as it became fashionable, patients were referred to a therapist rather than neurologists so that physical investigations and examinations were not performed. Shapiro described one psychoanalyst who thought that his patient was, quote, reluctant to give up the tick because it became a source of erotic pleasure to her, end quote. A second considered the tick a, quote, conversion symptom of the anal sadistic level, end quote. A third thought that a person with Tourette syndrome had a, quote, compulsive character as well as a narcissistic orientation, end quote, and that the patient's tics, quote, represented an effective syndrome, a defense against the intended effect, end quote. Psychologist Jerome Kagan tells us how Sander Ferenczi, a disciple of Freud who had never seen a patient with Tourette syndrome, wrote that, quote, the frequent facial tics of people with Tourette's were the result of a repressed urge to masturbate, end quote. Theories that explain everything after the fact are completely useless. Psychology establishes facts about sexual behavior, intelligence, crime, financial behavior, the effects of marriage, child rearing, and many other topics that people feel strongly about. It would be amazing if the investigation of subjects such as these failed to uncover something that did not upset somebody. Science seeks conceptual change. Scientists try to describe the world as it really is, as opposed to what our prior beliefs dictate it should be. Philosopher Daniel Dennett has said that the essence of science is, quote, making mistakes in public, making mistakes for all to see, in the hopes of getting the others to help with the corrections, end quote. Stuart Firestein writes that, the usual list of pillars of science, things like reason and fact and truth and experiment and objectivity, usually have one critical pillar missing. That pillar that we often forget, Firestein suggests, is failure. By failure, Firestein means making errors that we learn something from. Comedian Stephen Colbert coined the term truthiness. Truthiness is the, quote, quality of a thing feeling true without any evidence suggesting it actually was, end quote. Uh, that was Manju 2008. What Medawar is saying is that science rejects truthiness. This often puts science at odds with modern society, where truthiness is more prevalent, is more prevalent than ever. Corollary definition. Corollary describes a result that is the natural consequence of something else. You could say that your renewed love of books is a corollary to the recent arrival of a bookstore in your neighborhood. The noun corollary describes an action's consequence, such as having to study more, a corollary uh, to getting a bad grade. Section 2.2. Errors in science, getting closer to the truth. There are many relationships in science that have been confirmed so many times that they are termed laws because it is extremely doubtful that they will be overturned by future experimentation. Chapter 2 Summary Again What scientists most often mean by a solvable problem is a testable theory. The definition of a testable theory is a very specific one in science. It means that the theory is potentially falsifiable. If a theory is not falsifiable, then it has no implications for actual events in the natural world, and hence is useless. Psychology has been plagued by unfalsifiable theories, and that is one reason why progress in the discipline has been slow. Good theories are those that make specific predictions, and such theories are highly falsifiable. The confirmation of a specific prediction provides more support for the theory from which it was derived than the confirmation of a prediction that was not precise. In short, 
One implication of the falsifiability criterion is that all confirmations of theories are not equal. Theories that receive confirmation from highly falsifiable, highly specific predictions are to be preferred. Even when predictions are not confirmed, i.e. when they are falsified, this falsification is useful to theory development. A falsified prediction indicates that a theory must either be discarded or altered so that it can account for the discrepant data pattern. Thus, it is by theory adjustment caused by falsified predictions that sciences such as psychology get closer to the truth.